Now, before starting the video, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video keys fan. Keysfan.com offers cheap and legal OEM software keys in a simple and reliable way. You can quickly activate software like Windows and Microsoft Office using these 100% official keys, which are fully compatible with online activation. Moreover, they provide lifetime after-sales support along with 24 by 7 customer service. Right now, their software super deals are live, so don't miss out. Upgrade your software at unbeatable prices with Keysfan. Simply add the product you need to your cart and catch 50% discount for Windows Series with RTG 50. 62% discount for Microsoft Office and bundles with RTG 62. Don't forget to check the description for more details. What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new version of WinLater 10, which is currently the pre-released beta version for Android. This update brings some exciting changes and improvements, and I'll be testing it out to see how well it runs. All right, now let's head over to the releases section. And here it is, WinLater 10 beta. So in this update, they've added native glibc for better IO performance, which also helps speed up load times. There are some minor improvements to the Vortec driver, and they've also improved the internal registry editor, making container startup a bit faster. Now, here's something cool. You can open the Android browser directly from Wine, and they've added clipboard support, so now you can copy and paste between Android and the emulator. That's pretty handy. They also fixed pointer capture for external mice, made some network improvements, and implemented direct rendering on the Turnip driver. All right, now just tap on Assets and download the package. If you already have WinLater installed, you can just update it directly. Now, let me close everything and open up WinLater. As usual, allow permissions and it'll start installing system files. If you already have it installed, don't worry, it won't mess anything up. Let's go into settings. Nothing much has changed here. For box 64, you've got 0.3.2, which is stable, and 0.3.0. If we tap on components, you'll see box 64 0.3.3, since they've removed all the outdated versions. So let's go with 0.3.3, since it's the latest. Set preset to performance. Create a new preset. Set Dynarex save flags to zero. Now hit OK, then select the preset. Everything else is pretty much the same, so just save the settings. Now let's create a new container. Set your screen resolution to whatever works for you. Prefer lower for better performance. Set graphics driver to turnip. Also in configuration, they've removed the old turnip drivers, so now you've got 24.1 and 25.0. Let's go with 25.0. They also added direct rendering option, and it's enabled by default. DXVK is already set. In options, you can choose the version you prefer. DXVK 2.5.2 is the latest. Let's go with 2.5.2. Set audio driver to pulse audio. In wine configuration, set desktop theme. Now, you may notice that GPU name and GPU video memory settings are missing, like they have been removed in this version. Now, in advanced settings, set Windows version to 10 or above. In processor affinity, enable all CPU cores. Set startup selection to aggressive. And that's it. Now save the container and you're good to go. But before we boot the container, let's make one quick adjustment. I'll close it first. Head over to app settings. Now go to battery saver settings and set it to no restrictions. This will improve overall performance, but keep in mind that it may consume more power. All right, now let's boot the container. If we check the menu options, everything looks the same as before. Now let's first check out the direct 3D test. And as you can see, it's working fine without any issues. Now it's time for the real test. Let's try running Stray PC, a quite demanding DirectX 12 title that also relies heavily on the GPU. I'll also enable ultimate mode for better performance on the Poco F6. And here we go. Performance has definitely improved this time. We're getting around 45 to 50 FPS and it's fully utilizing the GPU. The Turnip 25 driver is actually performing really well, even on my older Galaxy S21 with Snapdragon 888, which I showed in my recent videos. That phone can also run surprisingly well on this driver. If you look at the results, we're getting an average of 45 FPS which is actually pretty good. Like the older Turnip GPU drivers usually didn't fully utilize the entire GPU, and over time, they reduced performance. But with this version, we're seeing much better efficiency. 
If you're using a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or lower, including the 8S Gen 3, it works really well and provides stable FPS. However, for the 8 Gen 3 or 8 Elite, it's still not fully optimized, so it's better to wait for the stable WinLater 10 release. That said, you can still try GameHub Fusion Emulator as an alternative. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.